23rd 2007 in Lexington so what do you do for fun like what makes um, you happy you can go back in time to the first thing you remember or you can just talk about right now um one of my like the first things I remember is just like playing with my brothers at my old house in Junction but recently I've been skating and playing piano okay all right I didn't know you played piano when did you pick that up um well I started when I was young probably like kindergarten and I stopped and I recently picked it back up because we got a piano. That's cool. Is there anything you're scared of other than this interview? <laughs> um, my main fears are the dark and spiders. Mm -hmm. Because spot, why do they need eight legs? I don't. And all those eyes, I don't get it. And the dark, I don't know. I'm just scared of the dark. <laughs> so you mentioned your brothers mm -hmm. several times. So you want to talk a little bit about them for a second? What are their, their names? What's the age gap? What do they um, kind of do? What sticks out? Yeah. Okay. So I have three older brothers. Christopher is the oldest, then Ryan, then Cameron. Cameron is 14, Ryan is 19, and I think Christopher is 25 or 26. Um, yeah, Christopher is a barber. He's going to barber school. Ryan works at a daycare, and Cameron just plays basketball and sports. What's your, like, family dynamic like? What's the support system like? You know, you've mentioned them several times, and there's all good memories and stuff. So, can kind of elaborate on not just your brothers, but kind of everybody. Yeah, I have a support system. You know, my mom and my grandmother the most. Um, yeah, my brothers and my dad have a support system. Do you ever like recall being treated differently because of the color of your skin? Um, not like when I was younger, but. More recently, yes. I get stared at when I'm in a store a lot or like if I'm walking, I have my hands in my pocket at the store. I just get like stares from like the workers and stuff. But. Any, like you said more recently, are you talking this year or? Just like kinda once you once I got older. School, yeah. yeah, like once I got older, there's been like instances like at a basketball game, I was going to say hi to my friend on the other team and a couple of boys said, I had my hair down and like my natural hair curly mm -hmm. and stuff. And they told me that my hair was messy. And they were like, they said that I was orange. Like my skin was orange. I don't know. It was just really bad. So I went off on them, but. What'd you say? Not many things have happened to me because for some reason, like, I don't know. I just, not many things have happened to me because I'm not threatening, I guess. I don't know. Okay, so feel. elaborate on that. So you're not threatening. Like, not what, like not what threatening. What is seen as threatening? Not threatening specifically, but I feel like they just target black men more than they do black women. Like, people that are racist and stuff. I just mm -hmm. feel like they go after black men rather than black women. Okay. Where do you go to school? Um, I go to Bate Middle School. Okay. Um... Any teachers that stand out to you as being influential or key to you in those years, don't feel pressured to say me because I'm sitting um, here. Well, um, I had my first black teacher ever in sixth grade, Miss Tressa Miller. She, um, I actually learned a lot more about like the civil rights movement and all of that because of her, because we did a project and I didn't even know much about it because they didn't teach us like anything about that in like elementary school. But yeah, Miss Tressa Miller was the first black teacher I had. And then you obviously, because you know, you're just really nice and cool. Well, thanks. And then Miss um, Stephanie Eisen, she just cares a lot about me and just is really just one of my favorite teachers and people ever. She just cares a lot, knows a lot about like black history and I just really like her. Obviously, you still talk to your friends. Yeah. Um, what's that like now that we're not in school and you can't really go and hang out with people during it's this time? It's definitely different. I've actually not talked to a lot of them because I just don't reach out and talk to people that much um but you know we still talk over like snapchat and stuff but it's really different yeah. because i can't go anywhere with them and um we didn't go to school so i didn't even get to say like goodbye or nothing before summer started i talk to the same two people from our school every day but then on occasions i talk to other people but it is different so what what uh what are you into when the world is normal um I was in a play at school before it got postponed. 
um, The Secret Garden, I played Miss Sowerby. Um, I was a mother to like 12 kids. Um, yeah, I was in a play. I was like auditioning for stuff. I managed wrestling, which that was fun. You know, I, this nice guy was one of the coaches. He was just really cool. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just really just play practice, honestly. Rehearsals after school every day is what I did a lot. I think that's all for real. I haven't thought much about college yet, but I do want to go to a school in New York because I want to, I just want to like major in musical theater and Spanish probably because it's good to know Spanish because a lot of people in America do speak Spanish and I feel like it would just be good to know. Sorry. But I want to go to New York after high school. And be on Broadway? Yes. <laughs> That'd be cool. I can see you on Broadway. Yeah, me and my friend have already planned all of it out. <laughs> have you ever heard a racist joke at school? Um, and somebody was like, oh, well, no, it's okay because, you know, we're friends. I can say stuff like that. Honestly, no. I mean, there's been jokes about Asians, like... Asian racism is so normalized, I feel like. And, like, nobody talks about it, but it is. But I don't think that there's been any jokes about, like, black people or anything like that. But there has been some against, like, Asians and Mexicans a lot. And I feel like just nobody talks about it. Like, it's not a big deal, and it is, because that's still racism. But, like, against black people, no, there's not been any, for real. What are some examples that, that you've seen? Just like people, like, you know, when they like pull their eyes back to make fun of them, I feel like that's normalized a lot. And like they make like, or saying that they eat dogs and stuff. Like, I just feel like all of that's really, nobody pays attention to it because it's just been so normalized that nobody cares anymore. And they should because that's not okay to be saying stuff like that. If you could give some advice to either someone your age or yourself about just relationships and dating and all that what would you say just like don't speed into a relationship because nobody needs a relationship it's not a necessity so if you're like young like if you're still in like elementary school or even sixth and seventh grade like it's not important and a lot of people's like mental health get affected by it and stuff like that. Like, just don't think that you need a relationship. So is there maybe some helpful advice you could give to someone just about overall mental health? If there's somebody in your life that is like making your mental health so bad that like you are getting like anxiety and like depression over them, you need to cut them off like right now because if they're weighing your mental health down to the point where you don't even like want to be friends with them then you need to completely drop them because your mental health is more important than like any of that so i think that if there's somebody toxic in your life you need to drop them well, how do you feel about people of other races and dating them just in general it doesn't have to be just you it can be do you think you come across any problems because of the color of your skin or the color of their skin i mean yeah like if i ever had like a boyfriend and he was like white or something his family might not like black people mm -hmm. and so that would be a conflict because then his family wouldn't like me and so they learned that you know black people are exist and you know they shouldn't be racist mm -hmm. but yeah that's like a problem is that people's family sometimes don't accept that their son or daughter is dating somebody of a different skin color i don't even want to get married or nothing dog for real because I got this plan for my future. Nobody knows about it. I'm not telling you guys. But I okay. got this plan for my future. And I feel like getting married to somebody is going to mess it all up. And having kids. I don't like kids that much anyways. So what's your take on the government and them meeting the needs of black people? I think that some of them care. I just feel like they haven't done much about it. Like of getting like equal rights for black people and all that. But... I don't think they care very much and just don't worry about it as much as they do other stuff. Is there a like political figure that you admire? Um, Michelle Obama, because she's a strong black woman and she serves as an advocate for women's rights. And I just think that she's really inspirational and she is one of my idols. Okay. 
Is there anybody that you're not too fond of? Um, Donald Trump, because... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, because he just doesn't care about people of color that much, and you can tell if you watch anything about him. Um, he doesn't care about women, like their rights. I just don't think he cares about anybody except himself and his followers. <laughs> As someone who can't vote, how do you how do you go about making change in your community? Um, I've gone to almost all of the protests and marches that we've had in Danville. I post a lot on social media to get the word out. And I just like post, I've been signing petitions and just like linking stuff everywhere just to get people to sign more stuff, donate, just like spread the word more about it and stuff. So social media, let's kind of focus on that for a second. So have you seen anything on social media that has like rubbed you the wrong way? Yeah. Um, there's been boys that I know that have said the N-word on their Snapchats and I will argue with them until they learn that they shouldn't be saying that. Um, you know, there's just, there's not just boys specifically, but it's not only boys, but like just people that are not black saying like the N-word and like other slurs on their Snapchat story and thinking it makes them look cool when it really doesn't. So me and my friends will like just kind of, not like argue, but like tell them that they shouldn't be saying that. And they've been posting like memes about everything and stuff. And like, like there was a meme about like George Floyd and stuff and people were just posting it and stuff and it wasn't funny at all and I just think that if you just talk to them enough then they'll not say it anymore and stuff like that has anybody like ever said anything specifically to you through social media just something that rubbed you the wrong way or something oh. that made you feel good you know whatever we're just kind of I got an argument with this media. boy that I've known almost my whole life because he called black people thugs <sighs> argued with this kid all the time I swear I did because he's like a Trump supporter and he is just like he's the big Trump supporter I mean he's like all about that and I'm like okay I feel like some people ignore what like like the president if he says something they just ignore it until he says something good that affects like them or whatever like I feel like they ignore the stuff that he's said like in the past and even like now the stuff he's saying they ignore it until he says something that is like good I guess like I feel like they form their opinion only on what they want to see on social media a lot of them also get it from like their parents and they're just uneducated completely and they just follow what their parents say so are you a religious person I mean yeah I don't like go to church and I don't like pray every night or anything but I do believe in God so I guess I'm a Christian but I just don't go to church for real I don't know but I do believe in God and I sometimes I get like Christian videos on like my Instagram stuff or like on YouTube and I'll watch them but mm -hmm. sometimes I'll watch like if a church goes live or something on like Facebook or something like that I'll watch them sometimes because you know where we can't go and I just watch the service okay um Let's see, do you have any like happy memories connected to religion or going to church or anything like that? Honestly, I didn't go to church that often when I was like younger, even now I don't, I didn't go that much. I went to Junction City First Baptist for a little bit. That was fun. I always like had good times there. I like Bible school and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Southland for a little bit in like first and second grade and that was fun too. But I just didn't really go to church or nothing that often, so I just... So did you jam out with the Southland band? <laughs> hey, they were getting down in there, boy, let me tell you. Yeah, I went one time with my friend, and I was like, I think mm -hmm. Brittany was singing, this girl Brittany that I know she was singing. It was good. I mean, yeah. Yeah. What do you imagine heaven will be like? Good. <laughs> good? I mean, just like happy and peaceful. I just feel like it's going to be different because I feel like everybody's just going <laughs> to come together. <laughs> come together? Okay. I don't know how to explain it. Just everybody's going to be good. 
do you have any like dark memories like tough stuff that you'd be willing to talk about um yeah i have a couple my sister passed away in february of 2018 so when i was in fifth grade she passed away and that is when my oldest brother took in her four kids so i babysit all of them at once Mm -hmm. but yeah she was shot and killed so yeah that was really dark my dad's been arrested a couple times and just I don't know. Those are probably just the two darkest things that I really remember. But, yeah. But you still got a smile on your face, which mm-hmm. is good. You know, you persevere. What's the greatest hope for yourself, your family, your generation, the future, any of it? Like, when you think of hope. Just making of? change and, like, getting justice for everybody. Like, having equal rights for everyone. Just, like, making the world. Like, just making a change, honestly. Just, like. Because, like, with all the protests and stuff going on, you know, we're trying to make change and get justice for, like, Breonna Taylor and all of them. And I just think that's one of my biggest hopes for the future is that we'll make change and get justice for everyone. If you see somebody doing something wrong, confront them about it. Like, whether it's saying slurs or just anything, just confront them about it. Um, Doesn't matter who they are. They could be your closest friend. You need to have deep talks with them about it because if you don't it'll just keep getting worse and worse and people will think they can still keep doing it what's something you were most proud of accomplishing i always end the school year in like honor roll whether it's a b or all a i ended it this year in all a guys not to brag but you know <laughs> <laughs> i had a c for a really long time this year and i got that up to an a so i don't know that's one of my biggest ones just doing all kinds of plays and stuff like having a good resume with musicals. Those are probably my two biggest accomplishments. And educating people too about Black Lives Matter and just all of that. Just educating people. Okay, let's go back to that for a second. So Black Lives Matter, Mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? I think to me it means that they matter too. Mm -hmm. Because usually if I say that, people will shut me down saying all lives matter. And they do, but Right now, black lives are, like, being, like, attacked and stuff, and so I think that they should matter, too. Like, it's not that, like, black people are here and everybody else is here. It's that we should be here. So, yeah, I'm just saying that they matter, too. Okay. So, people come at you with the the all lives matter stuff. Like, how does that make you feel when you're trying to explain your point? Mad. Mad? (laughs) Yeah. Do you want to go into that a little more, or just one more mad? Just mad. Just mad? Just, like, yeah, I get that all lives matter. Or when they say white lives matter, they always have, though, like, kind of. Like, they've never really not mattered. I'm just saying. It just makes me really mad when people say that. You know, my brother, my brother Ryan, has been called the N-word on the football field and stuff, like, by other counties. And my dad was pulled over a couple of months ago for not having his turn signal on. And they called in three other sheriffs and they searched his car. Wow. Yeah, for no reason, because he didn't have his turn signal on. It's sickening, honestly, that they would even do that because he wasn't really doing anything wrong. He just didn't have his turn signal on. It just, it's stupid that they did that. It just makes me mad. Just seeing so many black people get killed for walking down the street with a bag of Skittles or like just anything like they just get shot for no reason and killed. And it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of put this fear in me of walking down the street when there's cops driving around and stuff. Or like sometimes when I'm skating, they'll drive past and just, I don't know. It's just, they always drive past when I'm skating. I feel like, like all the time, it's just, I feel like they're just come to look at me and be like, okay, just making sure she's not doing anything. <laughs> like, every time I'm out there skating, they look at me. I don't know. You are 13, so, like, what, do you, what does the future look like to you as far as just everything? Just give me what you got, whether it's, you know, flying cars, self-tying <laughs> shoes, world peace. Um, I think that... In the future, we'll be equal, everybody. Women will have equal rights, equal pay, all of that. 
I think black people will be equal. I feel like there would still be racism in the world, but just not as much. I feel like we've eliminated a lot still, even what we're doing now. And I feel like in the future, it'll be eliminated a lot. Yeah, I feel like sometimes if there's like a black or like a person of color main character, that's like their whole story. Yeah. Like, I feel like it should be more about, like, I just feel like it shouldn't all be about their race rather than like their life and stuff. So, Princess and the Frog. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there is a black female protagonist. Oh my gosh. Can I talk about it real quick? Yes. That movie irritates me. I love it. It's such a good story, and I love that there is a black female protagonist. But they were frogs the whole movie. Literally frogs the entire movie until the beginning and the end. And I think that we need a female, or like even like a male black protagonist that's a human the whole time. Because... It barely showed that she was black because she was a frog the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that just has always irritated me that she wasn't a human the whole time. Is there anything that you want to like plug or shout out? Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, (laughs) or like whatever you want to do? Um, On my Instagram at London.Jackson, there is a highlight for Black Lives Matter information on how you can help. So there you go. That was good. (laughs) That was good.